Hello, today we continue our quest for solution as our nation grapple with the sense of violence all over. My name is Kaligui. Welcome to our program, Violence Free World. And I'm privileged today to finally, honestly, finally, maybe you should ask me the offside and you know. I have as guest on the program today the founder of Dark Communication, High Chief Raymond Aleo Dupesi. Chief, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much for the opportunity. All right. We're going to come right back into this conversation. But first, after this, be here. Don't go away. The role of the media has recently come under scrutiny following the protracted bloodletting and violence that has engulfed our country. This will not be that of video. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! It has come to the fore that issues such as hate speech, misrepresentation of fact, and biased reportage have ultimately added fuel to the ongoing fire. The mainstream media chooses which victim to victimize and which victim to support. That is why most of us, even as activists, did not say anything about the innocence. Many believe that the media has become an instrument of propaganda and blackmail, a trend that negates its traditional role of creating a peaceful and harmonious atmosphere. Why it may seem convenient to blame the largely unregulated social media there is abundant evidence that the traditional media, that is, radio, television and newspapers, more often than not, lend themselves to false bias and unconfirmed reports. This in itself has helped to escalate the ongoing violence in no small way. I am not saying that we should underreport crimes, but, but the more you give them those platforms, because they, they are calling for attention, the more they feel like they have succeeded or they are succeeding. So it's important for the media not only to do balancing, but also to be, to be more patriotic in its reportage of the entirety of the situation. Ethnic profiling, for instance, gained much ground from a reporting pattern that persisted unchecked for a long time. There is also the challenge of practitioners turning deaf ears to certain developments where sentiments and special interests are involved. The mainstream media are paid by the security apparatus, they are paid by corrupt government officials to, to keep quiet. They only talk on that which interests them and that which is their interest. That which is in their interest will attract the international media. Finally, just as some people have turned acts of violence like kidnapping, banditry, and even insurgency into a business, it is equally believed that the media could help bring about peace if professionalism, empathy, and patriotism are brought to bear on news reportage as we crave a violence-free Nigeria. Welcome back. Chief, now it's time to go straight into the conversation. By the way, you need no further introduction. Uh, Raymond Dupesi means broadcasting, means technology, means engineering, means several things. By the way, <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you very much for the opportunity okay. to once again thank all those that supported uh, the effort to celebrate a uh, very minimal contribution to national development. Did you say minimal, sir? Minimal. Well, that's consistent with your, <laughs> with your humility. Now, Chief, let's discuss other matters. We're going to come uh, right back to that. But first, Nigeria's unity and sovereignty has been challenged on multiple fronts by different persons. Some by making just incendiary remarks and then others by actually taking to arms. I'm referring to bandits, terrorists, and insurgents. How does this worry you as a patriot? Well, I must say that I am, I am shaking to the marrows of my bones. I am totally, totally 
in confusion about the recent developments in the polity. Nigeria, in my opinion, that I was born into, is a united country. We must do everything within our strength, our contacts, our influence, to ensure that this country, this country continues to be united. That a few individuals, for what I believe is their personal gains, they call it self-determination, they call it, but we have not exhausted all the mechanisms available to come to a round table and genuinely and properly resolve the challenges that we have. Even where conferences were set up and solutions were preferred, we had a situation where quite a lot uh, our leaders or those that were in power refused to allow the implementation of the recommendations that were made. This, amongst others, is the major cause for the banditry, for the, the demand for the uh, balkanization of the country. And I believe that the moment we are able to all come together, we are able to get an appropriate leader who is positively disposed to the restructuring of the country, to ensuring that there's justice, fairness, and equity. One who is committed to creating jobs, because you see, the violence that you have, the banditry that you have, is also out of lack of employment. So if we are able to get our children properly engaged, they have a hope, they have an opportunity to achieve their ambitions within the ambit of Nigeria, given equal opportunities, that level of demand for the division and balkanization of Nigeria we, we reduce to the barest minimum. Chief Alehu Dupesi personifies media. What is the media doing to help? Do you think we are doing enough by way of reportage? Are we, doing, are we not sometimes uh, uh, sympathetic to certain... Because this same uh, sentiment runs through everywhere. It happens everywhere. That's why they say there's no, there's no such thing as neutrality. No neutrality. You are either this way or that way. You can cover for some time. If you like, call it diplomacy. But somehow, we're just in one vicious cycle. So I think, but what do you think in your opinion? You are a media owner, so you are media. I'm looking at media now. What is the media doing to help? Well, let me say that the media is doing its very best, but is cowed and subdued. The media, in my opinion, including AIT, Ray Power, they have failed the nation. The days where you had courageous reporters who stood for Nigeria and believed in Nigeria, they defended the ordinary person to the last of them, with the last blood in them. What has changed? Money. Money. The lack of resources to motivate the individual journalists or the... The journalists, journalists themselves, yes. the journalists that are going out, because in most cases, even the media owners don't see the money. So the journalists themselves that you assign are already will be taken over by those who want to push their agenda and what you just see on the screen or what you see on the pages of papers are mostly what those, the actors, who now believe that they must have a group of editors, a group of in their class to, for propaganda purposes. With due respect, my personal view, 
is that this administration will be remembered for as that administration that invested most in propaganda, lies, distortions, blackmail, assassination of character of individuals than dealing with the ordinary issues that they have before them. Pass book, pass book, pass book. To which you are alleging right now that the journalists, as it is present as it were, yeah. have become tools in their hands to use and propagate this propaganda. Correct. And why don't you link that to the fact that because they are, the, the regular journalist is ill-motivated, they do not have insurance, they are not properly paid, they're not paid enough, it cuts across print journalism, electronic, I'm referring to radio and television too, and that's why everything goes down so they are available, anything you tell them, it's journalism for sale, everybody is enjoying his uh, propaganda thing. Let me tell you that in the, in the days of Shegun Oshova, uh, doing uh, Abiola, uh, Peter Enahuru, uh, uh, and the very Stanley Makebu, uh, there was investigative journalism. And people went to the bottom. It's not journalism of blackmail. I tell you, oh, I got this thing, you have to settle me behind and to, for me to be able to uh, leave that story. Or, uh, don't play it down or take it this way or the other way. They gave it as it was. And they were courageous enough to sit back and look at issues and provide solutions in the best interest of the nation. But today, people, you find uh, you need financial support, you have to bend this way or bend the other way. But I'm saying that not only the organizations, that even the reporters themselves, what you call a uh, brown envelope, what you on payroll, on sponsorships and everything. So you see people just, they know what is right. They know the truth, but they continue to sing praises where there are none, where people need to be told the home truth. We must all join hands to salvage this country, the media, the politicians, the academia, all of us have to get together and salvage this country. Well, Chief, there's so many, there are so many other contentious measures or issues that are coming, but we're going to come back to the conversation and then have those discussions again. This is Violence Free World. I'm here with High Chief Raymond Dupassi, founder of Dark Communications PLC. I'll be right back after this time out. Don't go away. Welcome back. This is Violence Free World. Well, I thought um, I was putting someone on the hot seat and it seemed like I'm the one on the hot seat now. <laughs> Interesting. High Chief Raymond Alejo de Quesi is putting me on the spot radar. I thought I was asking the question, <laughs> High Chief. Now, let's go into this issue of uh, measures being taken to get our country violence free. The measure of uh, amnesty has been brandished a lot of times, especially when they make references to how it worked in the time of uh, uh, Yaradua to Jonathan. Now they say we can apply it to bandits, we can apply it to even insurgents. Indirectly, in various ways, they have tried to put up all of this. Do you think it's a measure that is workable? Is this something that will work ultimately because failures have been reported in some cases and then successes supposedly in some places too? I'd like you to speak to this issue. Well, let me say that my personal opinion is the fact that the circumstances that led to the South-South uh, amnesty or, in, or insurgency at that time, 
are very different from the ones in the Northwest, banditry in the Northwest, and uh, the Boko Haram problems in the Northeast. There is no gain saying that the people of the South South at that time believed that we were taking, producing all the oil, and there's, there were ecological problems. There was lack of development in the area. There was no attention being paid to compensate the people. That was their grounds. But in the case of the Northeast, the Boko Haram problem, it's a totally different thing. It is that Western education is forbidden, is haram. And you have a situation where, in actual fact, you have in Kano alone, they say we have over 3 million children out of school because of the way Amana we perceived Western education and Islamic education. The, it is not actually Islamic education because in Saudi Arabia, in all the Arab countries, you find indigenous engineers, indigenous doctors, indigenous, it is not limited to recitation of the Quran alone. So people are trained and can, so Islam does not forbid the training or the absorption of research of Western education and what it is. So when you have children that you have thrown out of school because you said all they need to do is to recite the Quran, then definitely you are going to have challenge. I believe, I believe, and I pray that whoever becomes the president of Nigeria after this time, we declare a national emergency on education. We will go back to what Awolowo, Azikiwe, and Saudana did. Education will become compulsory for everybody up to university level. And every child will be supported and must be supported to have that education. I believe that the palliatives for the bandits, for the Boko Haram people in the Northeast cannot be applied to the bandits, asones in the Northwest. We also have to take cognizance that in the three Northern states, the challenges that they have again, is fueled by external forces. And we must have that clarity of mind. External forces. External forces. We must have that clar clarity of mind and the will to deal with them. So, to practical points, I believe that the nation Everybody, this, the ordinary people that are suffering right now, if you see the amount of tears, the amount of pains, families are being killed on daily basis in the Northwest by these bandits, by these people. Okay, as we wind down, let me take you to um, an area you're very, very passionate about, which is technology. I've seen, noticed that I'm sure you must be upset about this too. Um, the terrorists, the bad guys are deploying technology using this same telephony to, 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 to advance their cause. Why has it been so difficult for us to use technology to put to an end or to, to, to reduce drastically the issues of banditry, terrorism, insurgency, and all sorts. You will tell us today to go and register, let everybody have need, register their phones, do all of that, just so when phone calls are made, 
to demand for ransom or that kind of in no time you would have been traced where this is coming from and all of that that takes me also to that complicity thing i was telling you about how angry and how worried are, uh, are you concerning uh, this issue this challenge i want to just simply say that nigeria has been very unfortunate to have a leadership that is not exposed who travel and only travel for their pleasure not to see what they can bring back to nigeria it is very sad look the ministry of defense has had since about the 80s the late 70s were being urged to move away from this analog backward uh, this thing, to embrace technology satellite imaging getting even to monitor anything that flies over nigeria let us be in a position to identify the type uh, we are celebrating we bought to kano we bought to kano airplanes but to kano airplanes they are not fighter jets they are not go and go go and find out they are training jets of those ones that we bought, how many have crashed already? Go and find out. We are misguided. We need to retrain, to readjust, not based on sentiments, not based on ethnic leanings, not based on religious, but what is best for Nigeria. Finally, hi, Chief. Let's hear your word of advice to young people watching you right now whom this program is about and um, some of them were getting dissolution or getting dissolution what is your solution as far as violence is concerned and youth i will plead and beg all nigerian youths to shun violence to shun consumption of drugs and alcohol in excess excessive quantities i will plead with every nigerian not to attempt to run away under the guise of brain drain to other countries those countries that you are running to people made sacrifices to build them it was not always so and i want to plead with them to contribute effectively the leadership of this country to come together and ensure that the right things are done here in this country irrespective of what cost it is going to be here you find a lot of people will tell you ah why should you enjoy yourself why should you cause this thing you only die once die so that you can be properly remembered as one who died for the good of all. Thank you. Well, hi, Chief. I think that's a very, very good point to leave it. And I hope that you heed the advice of your bishop friend who told you that you should slow down. And you, he says that your problem is how to slow down. Please, 70, I think you should slow down. To let me join him in telling you to. <laughs> Chief, honestly, it's been uh, a pleasure speaking with you. I'd like to thank you at this point for finding time to oblige us. Thank you very much. I didn't disobey my, my, <laughs> my homilist who said I should slow down. Definitely, I just wanted to highlight the fact that there are enormous problems. And I believe that the experience, the courage of the elders, combined with the energy and the dynamism of the younger one, will help to get this country out of where we are today so we need to continue we can't just withdraw and sit back but the young people be strong be ready to take control of your country your destiny is in your hands what to make of it is what will become god bless you all happy birthday again high chief thank you very much all right this has been our show today 
My name is Kali Ikwe. Same time next week promises much more if you endeavor to be here. Until then, remember to remain on the road to a violence-free Nigeria. Thank you for watching. No.